like it's like the new beginning of a new era. Yeah, in in today's day, I think it's it's music and throw out mad joints and throw out and they on fire and they hot, but they yeah. just keep throwing the shit out. It ain't like back in the day somebody would take their time. Like I remember, I used to wait for Rakim albums. There would be a Rakim, and it yep. take like four years on purpose. And you be like, I, wow, it's about to be four years till I get my Rakim album. Yeah, is it? I, I, I'm used to that too. I love the wait because I know it's gonna be great. Now and it's so about. So you knew that time, Justin Timberlake. You knew you was in a different type of zone. Where and, and, and what you do when you get in that zone, you just keep going. Like you just keep recording. You won't stop when you like. Like the, there's been honestly, times yeah. where Timberland done been on fire. Then he chilled. Then he been on fire. Then he. When you catch that fire, you just, when you got that vision, you just keep going? I go, but now, like, I look at it like, it's just like I go, but I just like, I, it's just like, it's like a, it's a, it's a burst. Like, I know it's a burst. I know it's not, like, long or whatever. It's just like that, that burst of that burst of energy. And then I just keep going to it all dry out. And, but, but most of the time I know when it, when it, when it's over. Because I could feel it. Because I don't feel like I feel, I'm, I'm out. I ain't got no more in me. I'm done. <laughs> but yeah, I'm trying to tap that box. Because I go pause. I go. So I ain't going to lie to you. I've been making a soundtrack to the big, big show. And it sounded like. I don't know how to explain it. I just came from the I studio. I don't know what it sounds like. I, it sounds like the rebirth of you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know what it is. Because look. You put on this show for the people, bro. And it's like, we need this. You information, you don't have everybody on the big, big, big show. So it is it is only right for the big, big album. The yeah. Energy, all you doing is delivering that because you got so much good energy in you, you got to put it on the record. You can't keep that shit bottled up. I bet you can't even sleep at night. I'd be like, I don't know what's going on no. with me. Yeah, but I went to the studio, and I, you know I've been doing this forever, and it's that's why I'm asking you about the run because we recorded a joint today, and it's just it sound like flawless. Like it, I wasn't working hard. The shit is like, and I can't believe it because usually I work hard, and no, now the shit just coming have like you, you have you have it's like that thing that uh, thing Jimmy told me. It's like that tunnel vision once you. Once you get it, and they always said when you hit like 50, that, that second half of your life, everything just becomes like that light bulb just click. And it just, some people click on, some people don't. And when it clicked, you'd be like, nah, this can't be like this. It's too easy. I had to work this hard back in the day. Why is it coming this easy now? And then it'd be bugging you to, and you'd be like, it'd be bugging me out. We sitting yeah, up here. Yeah, you'd be like, what? You know, I just left on? the studio and. Before we pull out, because I'm rushing to come here, I was a little late. Dre pull up and he go, you know you made a hit today. I'm like, this shit don't make no sense. Like I'm, like, I'm pulling out like, yo, this shit don't make no sense. Like, I can't believe what's going on. It's just, we on a roll, my brother. My brother, versus, can we get a hint to who's next? What's up next? We working, baby. We working. I don't like to put it out there, because it, it's, you know, this verse is just, whew. It's, it's no, no, especially you who don't like dealing with people. You're always quiet to yourself. It's hard dealing with these personalities and these artists. Yeah, I, I Swiss like too. It, yes, I feel like it's something that like was it was meant to be. I feel like God put it in us to break us out of things that we wouldn't normally do mm. to challenge us in moments of mm. adversity. You know, you, you said it right, Joe. You know, I'm just. I don't go out. I Timbo do good. I'm he don't fuck myself. with it. He just chilling. He don't mind. He loves everybody, but he minding his own business. But with this, you got to deal with all these yeah. personalities. And I, I yes, and I feel it. I feel like because I'm just because what I'm trying to give back is just love. And I know once you get on that stage, it's it's like it's like you know when, when you go to church and you catch the Holy Ghost. That's what I know. What this verses is. It's like it's a reviver of of life. It puts something back in you, make you understand why you was put on this earth. Like, you are a vessel. A, 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 yeah, a and, I, and I do believe 
there's some truth to uh, the people, you know, you know, the game, you know, they always said it was a young man's game. And, and so the people, they kind of like push the legends on. And, but when you look at who come out with the biggest crowds, the biggest numbers, the biggest everything, it's the legends. And so people, and, and, and so y'all figured out a way, you, D-Nice, um, figured out a way to tap into, because you, you had to say at one time, yo, where the Aaliyah fans go? Or where, exactly. right? Like where the Aaliyah fans go? Where did Missy's fans go from the beginning? And now we, we making new music and it don't feel like I sing, but they're there, right? They're yeah. there. They're and there. So what I think Versus is doing is tapping into, like they come, they showing up. The keys. Yeah. The Ashanti gang, they, I think you tapped into something that nobody's been able to tap into, especially through social media. Because our era don't really fuck with social media like that. But because of Versus, because of D-Nice, maybe the big show, whatever, they said, yo, I got to learn this. That Joe talking that shit every day. I got to tune in. Yo, the verses got the real. And so we, we teaching them how to fuck with social media. Not so much that. It's teaching them about tech. Technology tech. is the future. That's what we showing them, that tech is the All right. future. All right, my brother. I love you. Send rain 100 kisses. You know, that's my, that's my niece, okay? <laughs> I got you, brother. And, and, and Monique said that's her twin. That's not your twin. <laughs> That's my <laughs> Love you, Tim. Be good, my you, brother. Bro. Uh, Man, one of the best guys on the planet Earth, Timbo D. King. Shout out to Greenwood, my brother Killer Mike. They got that black owned bank, Greenwood. And they sent me that hoodie, and I'm rocking it. And I got to throw some money in that bank just because. Not trying to talk like I'm extra rich, but <laughs> I gotta invest. My brother got a black owned bank. I gotta throw some money in there. I got to. And so Timbo the King, living legend, done sold over two, three hundred million records. It's too many errors. Jay Z go to him for the biggest one. Aaliyah, genuine, whoever you name. So, you know, that's that shit. It's the biggest show in the game. And so I'm watching this. Well, I don't know about y'all, but in my house, everybody was waiting to see that uh, Wendy Williams movie. Don't know. But everybody I know was ready to see the Wendy Williams movie. And so... Nothing new. Wendy is, she know how to do her thing. She messy. She done fucked up the whole, because I was on the salt and pepper shit. Mo Land, yo, Mo, you breaking the record, huh? How many ads we got today? We going for urban ads today and tomorrow. Shout out to all the PDs. Shout out to all the DJs. Um, I'm complete. And so, uh, in my whole entire career, and I ain't kept uh, counting my chickens before they hatch, but my whole career, no matter how many hits we put out of Make It Rain or All The Way Up or Another Rounds or whatever, I never felt complete. And so this new record makes me complete. I'm cool. Like, I could really, really walk away and be like, you know what? I did my motherfucking thing. And I got to thank God for that because a lot of us keep searching for that. It's almost, I don't know what that is, but when I watch, see the documentaries when people smoke crack, they be like, yo, I want that, that first high. And so for me who don't get high and has never got high and has never smoked a cigarette, 
Physics. Oh, uh, the fact that this new record's exploding, I'm in a happy place. Uh, but Wendy, 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 Wendy. And so Wendy, she knows how to stir it up. It's, you know, they got the movie, then they got the one she's talking shit. Sheesh. And then Wendy cries, and then she's smiling. I don't know if Wendy just be faking it. I don't know if she's a professional. Laugh, then cries, then laugh. Then I don't know if she just, she got that shit so much uh, in check to cry, laugh. I, I don't know. So I go on my Twitter and they say, uh, you know, her husband, Kevin, he was a tough guy. And so they said the actor who played Kevin says, uh, what is that? What is that shit at? So the actor that plays Kevin, uh, I'm trying to see where the blurriness at. Yo, as a um, they say he study fat Joe. Don't make I'm not made, his name is Morocco. They said he study fat Joe. As a hold on, let me wipe this shit down right here because we can't be blurry. Cause you know I wore the shirt to represent, um, where's Azzy? Because they said it's blurry, Azzy, so it's could you wipe it? It's not? Check. You just check? All right, then we good then. If you said it, but Billy Blanc said it, he don't lie. What's cool? Um, and so the guy, he study fat, yo. He want to play a tough guy, New York role, whatever. He was studying fat, yo, probably watching the big show. Because that's how authentic We keep it. And so it ain't my fault. As I look at it on your phone, because I don't know if these people, you know, some of these guys are illiterate and they want to fuck with me. So look on your phone to see if it's blurry or not. And so the guy studied Joe Crack the Dawn to get that. Huh? And I respect that. Smart man. It's clear now. Okay. So I had dinner the other day with my family. Uh, and, you know, they. What? It looks blurry to you? Perfectly clear. Okay. They, they're Trumpers. You know what I mean? And, well, former Trumpers, right? The mayor was good. Nasty was good. And so. But they're my family and I love them, good friends. Um, and they asked me, because people asked them, and it was weird to me, right? People asked them, y'all, how could you be friends with him? And he, this guy hates Donald Trump and you guys are, uh, you know, you, you guys love Trump and bro, first of all, we family first and we all American. And when a new president come, we go. You go for your guy or your girl, and I go for my guy or my girl. But once it's done, we family. And so politics should not destroy uh, families and friendships. And if you think that you too much at odds, you don't even bring it up. Leave it at that. And so, yo, what's up, Burks? Dade County Choppers, huh? No, no, because what happened, Mayor, let me explain something to you, right? Um, what, what happened at that? Capitol Hill. It 
it almost wasn't even a Donald Trump unless he's part of it. It wasn't a Republican. It wasn't a Democrat thing. It was, it was civil war. They were looking for civil war. And why? Because the minute you run up the Capitol Hill, when they breached the doors, they could have thought of laws. They could have said, fuck Biden. They could have said anything you could think of. The one thing they chose to think of was, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. 10,000 guys, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Now, that's in reference to Eric Garner from Brooklyn and to George Floyd. Now, George Floyd and Eric Garner got nothing to do with what's going on in the Capitol. So you fight for patriotism. You fight for your rights. You got robbed for the voting. What does that have to do with I can't breathe? I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And so now if you're a real one, if you black, Latino, or whatever, and you're a real one, you got to stop and set it off. There's no question. In Spanish, we call it toca la vena, meaning they trying to touch your vein. So you know how you got a friend that you can argue with, whatever, but they say the certain shit, like your mother's a this and that, they catch your vein. And so that's what they was doing. And so they wanted to entice and agitate whoever was black or brown to set it off and now we got civil war. Because either way, a couple of people die this way, a couple of people die that way, it's on. That's why the Capitol Hill got the gate so fucking high right now. They got gates around the whole shit because they know what was trying to happen. And they keep finding morons walking over there with guns and clips or pipe bombs. And so it's okay. Uh, we used to go to, it's sad, but we used to go to this thing called March of Dimes. And it was all the way downtown by the seaport. And Brooklyn be there, the Bronx be there, Harlem be there. And we used to go down there to the Bronx, thousand deep. And we was looking for trouble. And so we thought we was bad because we would all meet up on the train station, 149th Grand Concourse, take the trains down there, whole trains be filled. Co-op City Section 5, the, the, the forest and the Patterson projects and the God Mel Kwan's and the and, and but even when we got down there, Brooklyn was there 5,000 deep. We never really realized that Brooklyn is five times bigger than the Bronx. But the point is, when I was a young kid, teenager, those was the troublemaking years. We'd go over there to something positive and then pop off. And everybody fighting each other. So I know what. You know, I know what a Capitol Hill looks like. They had the Trump thing. You know, there was a lot of, I'm not going to lie, there was a lot of people there that was at the Trump thing who loved Trump to just went down there and like, holy shit, it got out of hand, we in some shit. That's different from the guys who rushed the door and had a plan and had intelligence. They had a woman talking about, I was here last week. Downstairs is where Pelosi's office is. That shit crazy. That was premeditated shit. And so, um, and so I know a riot going bad. I've been in a couple of those, right? And so, um, yeah, I'm not. And so, that got out of hand. But the truth is, um, politics should never destroy your friendship or love. I think, what's the girl? What's the girl that rolled out with, uh, with Trump? 
Katie, whatever her name is, or whatever, her husband's a Democrat, her daughter's a Democrat. As a, what's the little girl's name that she's on TikTok? And so her husband's a Democrat, and she was Trump's spokesman. I forget her name. And so you could be Democrat and Republican living in the same house. What's the girl that her mother's Katie Ann? What, what's the? Claudia Conway is the girl. What's her mother's name? Kellyanne Conway. Kellyanne Conway. So Kellyanne Conway represents Trump. She works in the White House. She worked, and her husband was Democrat. And her daughter's like, power to the people? Yeah, I have. I'll tell you, baby. You're the best, man. And so, good old Kellyanne. Kellyanne was on crack or something, bro. She ain't, yo, that, she was special. Kellyanne was special. Uh, shout out to Little Wayne, he got his pardon. Uh, Kodak Black, he got his pardon. And so, that's all I'm saying about Capitol Hill. It was foul, it was whack, whatever. They're very lucky a lot more people didn't get killed there. You know, I mean, in like, you know, congressmen and all that. Like, very lucky they didn't get killed. Very lucky. And then when you see guys walking in there with the plastic handcuffs, what's that for? Looks like you was ready to handcuff the whole Congress. Yeah, that's why as he gets the big bucks, she knows the answers. Yeah, everybody's, uh, every, we American, bro. If we follow the system and we deal with democracy, sometimes we win, sometimes we lose. I remember when Obama won, I ran up in the club, they were, my president is black. And we danced that shit all night. And there were some guys who probably hated Obama that wanted to die that day. And then eight years later when Trump won, I wanted to die that day. It's just the way it works. And so Russell Westbrook went ham on him. Gave me visions of Reggie Miller. Russell Westbrook, Bradley Beal. They went crazy. Back to back. It remind me of Reggie Miller. It's just recently that I said hello to Reggie Miller. For years, I would not talk to Reggie Miller because of what he did to the Knicks. And after he hit all them threes, he went like this to Spike Lee, choke, this, that. I mean, yo, I used to see Reggie Miller at Jordan events and walk right by him. Or see him in the airport and walk right by him. Mad as hell. And so that game we just saw with Russell Westbrook and Bradley Bill remind me of one of those moments. And I ain't mad at I ain't mad at um, my Knicks this year. They fighting hard. They fighting hard. They playing defense. They fighting hard. I hear people saying that Brooklyn don't play defense. They not going to win. They got to play defense. Now, I believe in Brooklyn. They got to play defense. Yeah, I got Patrick my own. Nobody will take my bet. I've been trying to bet. Nobody wants me to bet. You know I don't bet. I'm not a gambler. And so, but I call all my friends who know about bets. And I'm like, yo, I got 50000 on Patrick Mahone. They're like, nah, man. Keep your... They want... The book he won't take. <laughs> I love you guys, man. You know what? They don't even want me involved. They don't want me to get addicted to it. Nothing. People I know that bet are like, yo, keep your money. They're like, yo, don't bet. I'm like, no, but Patrick Mahone, I'm telling you, he got this. They're like, nah, man. 
Keep your dough. Don't even get involved. And uh, OG Andy boy said he got great. Look, I am the biggest Tom Brady bandwagon fan ever. I am a Tom Brady bandwagon. In fact, I'm one hit away from starting to call myself Tom Brady on the mic. The man forever. I fucks with him, but that Patrick Mahone, he lost that one time. Now, if it was the first time they faced each other, I would have said Tom Brady, but he lost, and I seen that look in his eye, and the only people who got that look in the eye, because you know, when you're on a plane, and they say the plane is going to, might crash, they'd be like, we got 150 souls in here. They don't say people, they say souls. So when I'm looking at that game that Brady came back from behind and beat him. I see Patrick Mahomes' soul. And it looked like Michael Jordan's soul. It looked like Tom Brady's soul. Muhammad Ali's soul. And when I looked into his eyes, I said, holy shit. He's the one. And so Patrick Mahomes, that's who I say he's going to win. You ain't got to listen to me. I don't know nothing about football. Every year, especially shout out my brother John Beeson, every year I try to watch football and um, I watch the first two games. I just can't, I can't get it. Bruce Leroy, yeah, yo, I'm telling you, that boy different. And I met him. I was at the All-Star game just before COVID. I'm sitting course out with my daughter. I seen him. I jumped up. Oh, how's it to Patrick Mahomes? Hey, how's it going, buddy? He said, hey, what's going on, buddy? He said, not my type of guy, personality, but he the truth. He's the truth. And so I fucks with him. Simple as that. Let me see if I see some, uh, get somebody on here. Um, let me see. Random person. I play games like this. You know what I'm saying? Hello. Talk to me, my brother. I gotta see your face, otherwise your face. I. I know, off. I know, I know, man. I know, I know. Hey, I really wasn't expecting you to answer one second. I didn't either. Man, you know. Yo, my brother, what's good? Where you from? What's your name? I'm uh, from San Diego. My name's Chris. Yo, Chris, who you got? Tom Brady or you got uh, Patrick Mahomes? Mahomes. All day. <laughs> Yo, I, I, I mean, I love Pat, Tom Brady, but I just think my own is a little quicker now, huh? Man, right? Beast. That's crazy. Like, the beast. Hey, beast. And I'm on these lyrics all day, every day, man. Beast. All right, my brother. Yo, you stay up. You stay safe. Thanks for watching hey. the show. Hey, man. Hey, I got a lot of love for you and your lyrics, man. You know, it's like one day, hear me out, man, because I got no action nowhere, but I, I um, know Wait, my worth, you, man. Shit. You got a verse? Spit a verse. Yes, I do. Uh, this, um, I wrote for a Nipsey tribute to Nipsey, but... Man, I wasn't expecting you to answer, Big Dog. I'm all nervous and shit. Uh, here, we'll just go like this. All right, I said, slippery, I gather with the quickness, our 
artillery. One side, I lay them all down. Got your dome piece knocked off. Sliver, yeah, you snake and get the shovel, bro. Instagram, I'm sniffing out your incense. You shitting us, kidding, cuz. Get the kids straighten up. All over your PMP, new party and play stubs. What the fuck? None took you nothing to me. Fish in a small pond, be ready to go swimming in a deep end. It's full of sharks. Miss me with them all. Gangsta shit I blazed it. I'm way too hard for all of y'all. Hands down, that's what hands is. Knuckle up, I chunk them up. Get ready for a romance and dance to this. Boy, I spin your circle like a loop disc. Fuck with everybody. I'm around the world. Two cents. Fifty on a dollar. Got my baby on the other half. Scam don't like me. I'm likely scam likely. I just might be what? Potent in this rap game, sharper than Spike Lee, Christopher Lee, Brandy Lee. What? I just might be. Man, it's like that's. Hey, Yo, brother, that's old God shit, you, too, man. though. God bless you, man. Good luck. You know, that's on Saturdays, New Music Saturdays. Not the big, 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 big show. But the man went for his, man. It's so hip hop. Let me explain something real quick before I leave. Michael Matt, what's up? If you go look at the video Flojo, which is my first single I ever dropped, it went number one hip hop singles in the country. My first single I dropped 26 years ago. If you see the energy in that video, forget the music, forget what it sounds like. But when you see the hunger, and you see my whole projects behind me. And they you got to flow, Joe. You got to flow, Joe. You got to, got to, got to, got to. When you see the energy and the hunger and the passion. When I see a young kid or anybody rap, it could be two complete different styles. But I see the the hunger, the pain in their eye. They want to tell a story. It's the same shit. It's like what I'm telling you about the souls. It's the same energy. It's the same hunger. It's the same kid saying, yo, I want to buy my mama a house, man. I got something to say. Some rock, a much finer vodka. And so that's what it is. And so today we took it a little light. We talked shit. Um, we had some Timbo the King. We had some entertainment, you know. But uh, I step it up tomorrow, man. I, I, I get, I get crazy for you. Don't worry about it. You know how I do. I get crazy. And my sister Remy, have you seen Remy's pictures on Instagram? Sheesh. I catch the whole studio looking at her pictures. I'm like, yo, what the fuck y'all looking at? Nah, 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 nah. She look great with homie this. I'm like, yo, bro, I don't play that shit. So I got to call Remy and be like, yo, Rem, what's up? Nah, I got to let him know. I got to let him know sometimes. I could do this. Damn, man. You know, because Rem, you know, I call Rem every day. My God, daughter go, God, Papa. God, Papa, and she living so good, and everybody happy, and Pat Boo's my brother in black love, and then, you know, and so she chilling with that family life, but every day, every other, whenever she feel like, she'll turn up on them. And so I called Tony Sunshine, I said, Tony, um, my brother, you know, God bless you. Um, Yeah, yeah, you know I love you. I said, yeah. I said, but Tony, brother, what's up with this blonde hair shit? You paint your hair. Like, we just shot a video, Puff Daddy, Cal, and Drake. Like, and your face is in there. You having a great time. Why are you going to change your hair? And so, Tony said, yo, man, because I'm handsome like that. Not everybody. Yo, listen, my crew is the copiest motherfuckers you have ever seen in the history of mankind. I know I'm, I'm talking too much. I'm not supposed to tell everybody, uh, you know, our personal shit. But, yo, they are crazy. So, so Tom says, I was like, yo, man, I'm, I'm too handsome, man. I ain't worried about the color of my hair. I'm just, you know, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Not too many. Cause I'm listening to them. Like, I'm like, dizzy. I mean, it, it sounds just like how Remy's talking to me on the other and Dre ain't too far behind. Listen, I love you guys. Let your darkest moments bring your most clarity.
Want me to break that down for you like I say every day? It's when you go through your tough times, your darkest times, that you realize who's really your friend, who's really there for you. Now, if you go through a dark time or a tough time and they ain't there for you, you are playing yourself. If you lie to yourself, knowing that these people ain't got your best interest and won't ride out for you or won't keep it real with you. Shame on you. Get it? But your darkest moments bring your most clarity. And the second part, I always say, put God first. Have faith in God. Trust God. Not just in the good times, but in the bad times. I ain't just telling you this. I lived it. And so you know I'm scared to fly. And it's been times I've been over Africa. The part where if you crash and live, you might just get eaten by a tiger or a lion. That part of Africa. And the wings on the plane is damn near doing jumping jacks. Bah, bah. And y'all know I'm scared to fly. So shit like. Everybody just bugging on the plane like. And I don't say, God, why? Well, this is God, please let me land safe. Please let it this, but God, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for giving me this amazing opportunity, this amazing life, giving me a chance to face my fears. And so you got to know somebody, somebody who ain't negative or a doubter will always find the positive in the lesson. No, I'm not talking about Africa like it's one scary place. In fact, I will challenge you to find a, another American rapper who has been to Africa more than me. And everything I say, I say it from facts. And I've been in Africa so much, you pretty much I could have got a dual passport. So I love Africa, every milk and cranny of it. You ever heard of Equatorial Guinea, where they only speak Spanish? Have you ever been to Angola where they speak Portuguese? Have you been to Rwanda, Sierra Leone? Have you been in Djibouti, Africa, Ghana, Zimbabwe, Kenya? I have. That's the problem. When Fat Joe talks his shit, he always backs it up. He always backs it up. And so I was just telling you about the plane flight. You know, a lot of guys, you know, they want to talk about going back to Africa, but won't go back to Africa. Does that make sense? And so calling me out on some Africa, you bugging out. I damn near lived there. And so, uh, God bless everybody. Put God first. I see you tomorrow. We the biggest in the game. Believe in God. God will get you through every day. Peace, y'all.